Good morning. This is a good morning in Moscow. My warmest greetings to all my colleagues present at this great event, uh, all fellow researchers and all participants. I'm very thankful to the organizers of this forum for the opportunity to speak to you and to discuss with you um, some issues which interest and challenge us today. I have been teaching English as a foreign language at Moscow's universities for more than 40 years now. And uh, parallelly, I was also busy with uh, research in the field of education and social, uh, social linguistics. So these are my most important um, fields of interest. Let me share screen with you. I'll continue with some slides to help you follow me better. So today I invite you to reflect together with me on the mission of a university and its international positioning. What makes a university visible and reputable? That's a big question. International rankings. Of course, international rankings. Rankings have become a kind of a mirror, but mirrors differ. Some of them reflect objective reality. Others tend to embellish it, and still others produce an inadequate, distorted image. International university rankings are very important, too important not to be objective for several reasons. First, they set modern educational standards for other universities to follow. Second, they have become uh, drivers for decision-making as far as university development concerns. Third, high rank universities attract better faculty and more talented students. And last but not least, higher rank universities also attract financial support from governments and from sponsors. Those were positive uh, aspects of uh, international rankings, but there are some negative aspects, making university rankings nonetheless important. For example, pursuit of higher ranking may distract university from work uh, on its uh, educational and research, scientific research quality. Besides, uh, this um, uh, desire to uh, emulate elite universities may uh, really diverge a university um, and deprive it of its uh, own uh, uniqueness, of its own uh, unique identity, of its uh, advantageous points. Besides, university strategic goals may also somehow um, run counter to the requirements of the ranking organizations. Uh, they may not coincide with them. There are some factors which make uh, a university educational goals very important. Why are goals so important? Because they are a, a powerful factor of international development. Um, just not only national development, but international development. University goals direct the development of particular universities in some particular countries, determining their distal and uh, proximal tasks. They guide uh, everyday work of instructors and uh, tutors. Mm, there is uh, also a very interesting observation in one of the research works which I came across, which uh, concerns uh, higher education quality 
um, which may differ from country to country. So these concepts of higher education quality uh, is perceived differently in different countries and different cultures. And this can't but project onto university goals. Finally, of course, the visible results of the university work is thanks to the goals set. So we've come to the conclusion that university goals are very important and they are associated with the uh, conditions, the situation in which a university is functioning. It's very important. Uh, what historical and what cultural setting uh, does the university operate in? Uh, what missions does the university set itself, itself? So all this can't be disregarded in assessment of the university work. Now, uh, let's turn to some other aspects of this issue. In order to determine the, uh, the goals of the universities and their importance, I undertook some research. And my hypothesis at the beginning of the research sounded uh, as uh, follows. Educational goals of world universities may have relationship with their international ranking. For example, QS ranks. In order to refute or to confirm this um, hypothesis, some questions had to be answered. For example, are there any locally marked educational goals? Uh, some marks, uh, some uh, local, uh, locally marked goals which tell um, some group of universities from another group. If yes, what global university QS ranks uh, do these universities have with these locally marked goals? Are QS metrics aligned in any way with these locally marked goals? Do they take them into consideration in any way? And finally, uh, the question and the title of my research uh, should be answered. Are universities goals and university world ranks just random variables? In order to answer these questions, uh, I undertook some research and selected uh, 21 universities uh, at random, but uh, preferably from different continents and representing various cultures uh, from the uh, 2020 yearbook uh, of QS assessments. Seven universities were selected from the top 100, seven from the second and third medium group, and seven universities from the peripheral uh, group of uh, the ninth to the twelfth hundreds. I studied the vision and mission parts of universities' charters in search of their goals, their missions. Only goals that were shared by more than two universities were taken into consideration. The methods used concerned coding, uh, content analysis, collation, and interpretation. What about the results of this research? Now I'm going to sh share screen with you again. The results showed that the investigation identified two different groups of university goals, universal goals and locally marked goals. Universal goals were shared by practically all the universities considered in all the continents and irrespective of the group to which university this university belonged to. So um, irrespective of whether it was a top university, medium or peripheral, they can be seen in the slide. Locally marked special educational goals 
were characteristic of um, primarily of the medium and peripheral groups. They were more uh, locally targeted uh, and uh, they were characteristic of some particular geographical uh, areas of countries such as Latin America, for example, the Middle East, Asia, and Russia. Special goals were um, interesting from the viewpoint of their content. For example, you can see them addressing problems faced by the nation, not global problems, preserving cultural and national foundations, cultivating ethics, virtue, and morality. Very valuable goals, but they were not shared by the top universities. Special goals of medium and peripheral universities, uh, as we can see, uh, focus especially on local needs and contribution to local communities. The big question is whether these specifics are noticed and taken into account by international assessment ranking systems like QS. My next slide will show you further discoveries which I made. My research showed that there are some characteristic uh, typical uh, university goals in each group. Uh, we can refer to them as a dominant or marker goals. And um, the just quite a number of marker goals of the top group were shared by quite a lot of universities considered uh, in this research, in the medium and in the peripheral group. But this mere fact did not yield them, did not gain them an advanced rank. Uh, this fact uh, indirectly shows that there is no direct and visible relation between university rank and university goals. On the other hand, uh, marker goals of the medium and uh, peripheral groups of universities were not shared by uh, top 100 universities. And uh, we can see from this that educational goals reveal some various perspectives and um, focuses of attention, which cannot but tell on universities' policies and performance. Now it's time to turn to QS criteria. They are well known. There are six dimensions and they're well known. That's why I, I'll focus on the, on the three, which to my mind uh, seem to be most vulnerable uh, for criticism. The first is academic reputation. So this dimension presupposes surveying of some notable representatives of academia uh, through questionnaires allocated to them. Uh, the name list of these respected people is compiled by the QS um, holders. <clears throat> Besides, uh, the number of questionnaires allocated to each country is also determined by the QS people. And this representation seems rather disproportionate. Uh, just decide for yourselves. Uh, Thailand, for example, in this uh, is represented as 0.6% in the total number of questionnaires allocated to academics. Brazil and Mexico by only 1%, but Anglo-Saxon countries, including Australasia, are represented by 30%. There was a very interesting statistical research by Huang in 2012, which discovered and statistically uh, confirmed that um, tested by the Pearson correlation coefficient and the Spearman ranking correlation shows that higher number of questionnaires returned from a country results in higher ranks of universities of this particular country. 
in the QS estimation. But if the final QS assessment is influenced by the number of countries experts involved, and this number is determined by the QS, it questions the justness of the system because the final result is uh, to some extent predetermined. The second dimension, which is very important, um, is employer reputation, which is also measured globally, also on the basis of questionnaires. Uh, the orientation of university education on this global opinion of uh, global um, uh, entrepreneurs and business persons uh, somehow makes it impossible from the very beginning, from the start, by default, um, for the university to be estimated adequately because universities providing excellent personnel for their local community uh, needs and uh, requests do not fit into the QS uh, coordinates by default. The third dimension is citations per faculty. It looks quite objective and very powerful, but at a closer look, it's not uh, all so simple. Uh, QS uh, regards only quotations uh, from uh, Scopus database sources. And uh, Scopus is, works under the, uh, as everybody knows, under the uh, World um, Scientific Research Monopolist Elsevier, um, which is rather commercialized. So ordinary tutors, ordinary instructors of universities encouraged to get published uh, primarily in Scopus journals are driven into a certain path, which is mostly controlled by Anglo-Saxons. So who determine the rules of the game and the criteria for assessment, which is not very just to my mind. A mere look at the wording of uh, the formulations, if you glance again at these metrics, shows that they are very globally targeted. And they are geared towards very pragmatic human reproduction for world labor markets. These dimensions do not make any allowance for particular national concepts of education for cultural priorities and interests. In other words, to use some analogy, I would say it's impossible to appreciate the aroma, the fragrance of a flower without having a sense of smell. QS is a British company and its metrics is uh, underpinned with Anglophone values and philosophy, which may not necessarily coincide with the values of other universities across the globe. Therefore, it does not seem surprising that more than 50% of the top uh, QS 100 universities have Anglo-Saxon affiliation, more than 50, about 57%, according to my calculations. And bearing in mind that international ranking of universities today is not only a matter of prestige, but a matter of financial preferences, uh, financial assistance rendered by governments and sponsors, the issue of ranking objectivity acquires a very tangible perspective. This dissatisfaction with the existing ranking systems leads to creating new ones. We know about the Shanghai very famous and reliable uh, system of uh, ranking. Uh, five years ago, uh, the Moscow Lomonosov University also launched 
uh, system of university rankings of their own. Uh, they formed it uh, together with the international um, ranking expert group. And uh, uh, their innovation was introducing a third mission or a third dimension uh, alongside with the traditional measuring of uh, research and educational quality. They uh, measure universities' contribution to society. Finally, finally, my concluding message. I'm finishing up, and my concluding message is very simple. We cannot assess the work of universities without taking into account universities' missions. They must be on the agenda, they must be visible, they must be taken into account. International ranking metrics exemplified by QS is evidently um, globalized and uh, geared towards Western values and pursuits. Universities of distant rankings have their own uh, characteristic goals and value dominance, which are more locally marked. They're more involved with the globalized agenda and consequently they, uh, it may be partially a cause of their lower rank. That is why, although universities' goals and their QS ranks are not visibly directly related, but we can't uh, answer the question in the title of this uh, project uh, with certainty in the affirmative. We can't say, yes, university goals and their ranks are just random variables, because there is much more to it than that. Thank you for your patient assistance, for your patient attention and assistance, because your uh, attention is assistance for me.